Hey guys, uh, here is your intro video for related rates. Um, if you could just look up at me and blink twice so I know you're actually doing this instead of just playing Candy Crush, that'd be great. I'll wait. All right, excellent job. Let's move on. Uh, so the idea here is you're going to have rates of change uh, for various variables, like multiple variables, um, but everything will be with respect to time. All right, so let's do a couple examples. It'll kind of make more sense as we go through it. But essentially, you're, you're getting to apply your chain rule, okay, where, where it actually will apply. We've applied higher derivatives, um, you know, and sometimes the chain rule would kick in. But this is a real pure application of chain rule. So let's take a look. We've got all edges of a cube expanding at a particular rate. How fast is the volume changing when each edge is 10 centimeters? So you're talking about edges that have a rate, you have volume that has a rate, and both are changing with respect to time. So I'm going to break this down into its steps, you know, very basic steps. And this is sort of the process I hope you'll follow for a while. And then eventually you'll kind of just be able to do them without having to list every little step. Um, but I think in the beginning it's kind of important. So first things first, let's draw a picture. Uh, we do have a cube. So I'm going to just draw a cube. Something like that. Um, and the uh, edges, I don't have a name for the edges, so I'll just call them x, I guess. And it is a cube, so they're all the same. Uh, it says name the variables and constants. So x is going to be my edge. Uh, t is going to be time. Uh, they mentioned something about volume, so I guess I'll use v for volume. And do I need anything else? I've got the edges, I've got the volume, I've got time. I think that's all the basic sort of components. Uh, then it says write down any additional numerical information that you're given. Okay, so I'm given the rate that the uh, edges are changing is 3 centimeters per second. So if the edge is x, then the rate that x is changing with respect to time would be dx dt. So it's the change of x with respect to time. Okay, change of x over change in time. And dx dt is 3 centimeters per second. That's given. Uh, the edge is 10 centimeters. The edge is just x, so that's 10. And let's see, any other information we're given? Nope, I think that's it. Uh, what are we trying to find? How fast is the volume changing? Well, the volume we said was v, but I want to know how fast the volume is changing. So that's the change in volume with respect to time. All right, see how it's going? It's just bang, 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 just follow the steps, and it'll sort of give itself away. Um, the next step is to write an equation that relates the variables. So do I have an equation that relates volume, right, volume with the edge? Right, I think we do. We have volume, of course, for a cube would just be x cubed, right, x times x times x. So there's our volume equation. And then here's the, here's the calculus part. Differentiate with respect to t, okay? I know the temptation is just going to be to write v prime equals 3x squared. But this is with respect to t. So it's dv over dt equals 3x squared, that's, that's fine, times your chain rule kicker. That's why I wrote chain rule here, dx dt. Think of x as a thing, OK? I know you're used to doing dy dx, and that's why you're thinking just 3x squared. But it's, it's really dt. In fact, to be honest, if I had gone back and just called this like, I don't know, like l for length or s for side, uh, you probably would see how the chain rule would kick in a little bit more. Uh, but actually, I'm kind of glad I did this because I, I need you to realize that it's not always going to be with respect to x, um, even though we're using an x. So it's 3x squared dx dt, and now we've got our, you know, our differentiated equation. Okay? Evaluate and solve for what you wrote down in step 3. So in step 3, we were trying to find dv dt. Well, luckily, this one already is solved for dv dt. I just need to know what x is and dx dt. How convenient. I know what x is and dx dt. So dv dt, my rate of change of volume with respect to time, is going to be 3 times 10 squared times 3. And what's that? Uh, 900. 900, what are the units? Let's see. Well, volume would be you know cubic centimeters um, per second. So it would be centimeters cubed per second. And that kind of makes sense if you think about it because the original... Um, 3 is just part of the equation, but x squared, that's centimeters squared, right? x is centimeters, times 3, which is centimeters per second. So it's centimeters squared times centimeters per second would be centimeters cubed per second. And there's your first one. Okay? All right, sorry, I paused it, and uh, my phone had rang. So um, 
I just quickly switched the example. I think we finished that first one, right? Sorry, let me come back real quick. Uh, we set everything up, we solved, we solved, and there was our final answer. Yeah, we finished that one, okay. So next example. That focus in there, there we go. All right, we've got a spherical balloon, all right, so spherical. Uh, inflated with gas at a rate of 800 centimeters cubed per minute. So that's the volume, right? If you just look at the units, you can tell. And how fast is the radius of the balloon increasing the instant the radius is 30? So first things first, I know it's a spherical balloon. So I'm going to just draw a sphere. And I'll call this R for radius. Uh, we'll do V for volume again. Uh, T for time. Is that everything? Um, yep. All right. Write down any additional numerical information. All right. We know the change of volume this time is 800 centimeters cubed per minute. We know the radius is 30 centimeters. And that's all the number stuff they give us. And what are we trying to find? Uh, how fast is the radius increasing? So it's the rate of change of the radius with respect to time. So let's call that dr dt. That's what we're trying to find. Do we have an equation that relates the volume with the radius? Well, for a sphere, I think we do. Hopefully we remember our geometry. Volume is 4 thirds uh, pi r cubed. And now we get to actually differentiate with respect to time. So dv dt is going to be, all right, here, 4 thirds pi is just a number. right? This is not any variable. There's no product rule here. Um, there's no quotient rule for the 4 thirds. It's literally just a number times a number times r cubed. So this, I'm just going to do this for the effect. That's just some number. So when I go to do my derivative, it's that number times the derivative, oops, times the derivative of the r cubed, which is 3r squared dr dt with my chain rule kicker. Kind of the same way the x cubed became 3x squared dx dt, the r cubed becomes r squared dr dt. The only thing that, um, or you know, the, with the 3, the only thing that you have to kind of bring along for the ride is the constant. If this was, you know, 5r cubed, I'm sure you would have thought to do just 15 r squared dr dt, which is fine. But it's just a little more complex than that. And yes, I see there's some simplifying we can do. 4 pi r squared dr dt, and that's about as far as I think I can go with that without actually putting in the numbers. All right, what do they give us? They gave us the 800 is the dv dt. They gave us the r is 30. And we're trying to find dr dt. So this equation has everything we need. It's got three unknowns two of which are actually known, right? Three variables, two of which are known, and one is that's unknown, so we can just solve that. So this is 800 equals four pi times 30 squared um, times dr dt. Solve for dr dt. Uh, let's see, this is gonna be 900. Uh, so this is 800 over 900 equals four pi dr dt. Divide by four pi, that's gonna be 200 over 900 pi dr dt. Clean that up one more time. What's that? 2 over 9 pi. And what are going to be the units? Let's see. It's the rate of change of the radius. Well, the radius is just in centimeters. Oops. Radius is just in centimeters. So my, um, my dr dt is going to have to be centimeters per, and then what was it? Seconds? Oh, no. Minutes this time. Minutes. And I'm sure you can put that in the calculator and get whatever it is, but that's the idea. So at this point, once you get here, You've done the hard part, really. All you're doing now is plugging in and solving. Okay? And that's, um, that's related rates. You are literally relating the rates of various objects and how they're moving and uh, coming up with a missing piece of the puzzle. All right? I would say now pause the video. I would say pause the video, try this one on your own, and then just start hitting play whenever you get stuck on a step. Okay? And then keep pausing, though. Like if you have stuck on the first step for whatever reason, pause it, you know, try it and then watch the first step and then pause it and try the second step and keep going until you can try to get all the way through. Okay, so pause the video now. All right, if you hit play, that means you need um, either a little help or you just want to check your answer. So let's see. We've got a ladder resting against a vertical wall. Um, the bottom of the ladder slides away from the wall. So all right, so I've got some kind of wall. I've got some kind of ladder, right? I don't know. I'm not an artist some kind of ladder, and the ladder is sliding away from the wall. Um, the bottom of the ladder slides away at a rate of one foot per second. How fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall? So the top of the ladder is basically going down. 
bottom of the ladder is going out, and we know some various numbers. Okay, so we know we have a right triangle, hopefully. Um, we'll go L for ladder, I guess. L for ladder. Um, we've got the wall, I don't know, W, I guess. W for wall. And we've got, how about G for ground? G for ground. And let's see, do we need anything else? We've got some numbers to deal with, but do we need any other variables? I doubt it. Um, for, for these kind of problems for the right triangle, sometimes I'll use just ABC, because obviously, you know, that's pretty common. But I think for this first one, I'll just use the letters that make sense for the context of the problem. It doesn't really matter. Obviously, it doesn't matter. Um, so let's write down the numerical information. The ladder is 10 feet long, so that's 10 feet. Um, the bottom of the ladder, and here, I, I'll even put it in here. It might, this time, it might actually help to put the numbers in the picture. Um, the ladder slides away from the wall. So the rate at which this is changing, this distance, right? If the ladder in, in a second is over here, the bottom of the ladder, well, then this distance extended out. So the rate of change of g with respect to time is really how far out the bottom of the ladder is. So dg over dt is going to be 1 foot per second. So dg over dt is 1 foot per second. I'm just writing it in both places. So that's this one. How fast is the top of the ladder sliding down? So this is my W, my wall, right? So yeah, the original wall is not changing, but I'm just going to use W to represent the part where the ladder is touching the wall. So this is changing, right? It's going down here, going down this way. Uh, so that's the rate of change of W with respect to time. So um, that's what I'm trying to find, dW over t, uh, dt. How fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall when the bottom of the ladder is six feet from the wall? So this has got to be six feet right off the bat six feet. So G, sorry, I kind of jumped around there. I went to what we were trying to find um, without finishing all my number stuff yet. Uh, but it's okay. As long as you get it all, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Uh, all right. Write an equation that relates the variables. Well, hopefully you see a right triangle and you see three sides of the right triangle. So you do have the Pythagorean theorem. So you have W squared plus G squared equals L squared. Okay. Um, let's see. Differentiate with respect to time. So all of these are things, right? Um, I guess looking back at the picture, let's just look common sense wise. The ladder is falling down, right? Basically the top of the ladder is going here, the bottom of the ladder is going out. Is the ladder itself changing length? Right, it's not, you know, the ladder's not, you know, shrinking up or, you know, when it, when it falls down, it's not extending out. So this ladder is constant. So if you were thinking about, okay, DWDT, DGDT, what about DLDT? Well, technically, dl dt has got to be zero because L is constant. That's something nice to look out for. You may not have noticed it right away, and that's okay. It would show up down here because when you go to do your, you know, your derivative, you're going to find out that L is constant, and you're going to end up just having a zero there. That doesn't always happen. Sometimes all three things are changing, but in this case, they're not. So if L is constant, L squared is just some number, right? If L squared is going to be 100, right, if L is 10, so the derivative of 100 is just 0. So when you go to differentiate, you're going to have your 2w dw dt, chain rule kicker, plus 2g dg dt equals 0. If you don't believe me, go ahead and do your chain rule on this, your power rule chain rule. 2l to the 1 times dl dt. But dl dt is 0. So I don't care what 2l is, it's going to be just 0 when you multiply by the dl dt. All right, so if you recognize a constant, get it out of the way. All right, let's clean this up. Um, we know, what do we know? We know G. We know DG, DT. We know uh, DW, DD is what we're trying to find. Uh-oh, I don't think we ever found W. I don't have anything for W here, but I can't have two unknowns. Well, luckily, we know how to find W. And this is going to happen all the time. You're, you're going to not realize you need something else until you get down to this part. We can find W by just basically doing the Pythagorean theorem to figure out that missing side. Although hopefully you recognize this is a you know just a Pythagorean triple. It's just a three, four, five multiple times you know multiple of two. Yeah, multiplied by two, <laughs> six, eight, ten. So W has to be eight feet. If you want to do the actual theorem out and get the eight, that's fine. This one worked out pretty simply. Um, is just a uh, Pythagorean triple. So now I know W. I can plug everything in. 2 times W, uh, we said was 8. DW, DT, we know is uh, what we're trying to find, sorry. DW, DT plus 2 times G, which was 6, times DG, DT, which is 1. That equals 0. I realize that should be in this step. Sorry about that. Let's make some room here. 
right? This, this part is fine, but I start plugging in down here. As you can see, I don't normally do the steps. I just kind of do the problem. Um, I'm just, I'm sort of recommending the steps in case you get stuck anywhere. If you're comfortable just kind of with, you know, a uh, free flow of thought, please just go for it. Uh, so this is going to be 16 dw dt plus 12. So dw dt equals negative 12 sixteenths, which is negative, what, 3 fourths. And that's got to be, uh, what, feet per second? Uh-oh, I got a negative. I must have done something wrong. Think about it. The rate at which the distance from the ground to the top of the ladder is changing at a rate of negative 3 fourths feet per second. Well, that has to make sense because this distance is getting smaller. Every second, this is 3 fourths of a foot down, like 9 inches, right? Every second, this goes 9 inches further down. 9 inches further down, 9 inches further down until eventually, of course, it's going to hit the ground. So to get a negative answer here actually makes sense. I'd be shocked if you got a positive answer here. Okay? So when you answer this question, you can say, you know, the, it says, how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down? The top of the ladder is sliding down the wall at a rate of 3 quarters of a foot per second. Or you can just say the rate is negative 3 fourths feet per second. It doesn't really matter as long as the context of the problem makes sense. Okay? So it should have been an actual value of dw dt of negative 3 fourths feet per second. But again, you can just say the ladder is sliding down the wall at a rate of 3 fourths feet per second. It's the same concept, same idea. Okay? All right, there's your third example. I would pause it again and see if you can do this one without any help. Uh, and only hit play when you're ready to check it or if you're totally stuck. So go ahead and pause now. All right, hopefully that went well. Um, we're going to go ahead and do this one now. We've got a plane flying horizontally uh, at an altitude of one mile. So we have a plane, I don't know, plane flying horizontally. Nah, it's not going backwards, right? So a plane flying horizontally uh, at an altitude of one mile an hour. So we have an altitude here with a speed of 500 miles per hour passing directly over a radar station. Find the rate at which the distance from the plane to the station is increasing when it's two miles away from the station. All right, so we flew over some radar station. I don't know. I don't know how to draw that. Let's see. Is that one of these things? Right, like a satellite dish kind of thing? I don't know. Like I said, I'm not an artist. Um, and then eventually the plane just keeps going and going and going. So let, let's go ahead and, and fill this in. Um, let's, let's just do A, B, C. So we have A, B, and C. Oh, why, I can't believe I did that. I'm so sorry. A, B, and C. You'd think I would actually know some geometry. Um, all right. So we have an altitude of 1. Okay. So A equals 1 mile. Uh, the speed of the plane is 500 miles per hour. So if the plane's path is B, well, then DB, DT, is 500 miles per hour. Okay, there's that. So, right, so A is the altitude. Um, B is the plane flight. Uh, C is the distance, distance between radar and plane. Okay, so I'm just sort of explaining there. Uh, of course, T is time. All right, so DBDT, what else? We have the distance from the plane to the radar station is two miles from, you know, the plane is two miles from the station. So the plane eventually gets to here, and that's going to be two miles. So C is two miles. So this is one, one, this is two, and we don't know this one yet, but we can figure that out, right? Uh, a squared, B squared, so we've got 4 minus 1 is 3, so what is this, radical 3 miles? So B is radical 3 miles. Just did a little Pythagorean theorem there. You can double check if you'd like. The numbers are so small, it's not so bad. Just remember, these are all miles. Uh, D, B, D, T, what are we trying to find? Find the rate at which the distance from the plane to the station is increasing. The plane to the station is C, so I'm looking for the rate at which C is changing with respect to time. So we have A, B, C, D, B, D, T. We're trying to find D, C, D, T. And you might be asking yourself, what about D, A, D, T? Well, what is D, A, D, T? Is the altitude of the plane changing? Is the plane flying up? No, it's flying horizontally. Okay? If it were flying up, that would make this a slightly more complicated problem. It could happen. 
which it does, and you know that in real life that actually happens, and they have to calculate that. But for the purposes of this, it's a right triangle, so we don't have to worry about it. A is constant, so dA dt would just be zero. So when we go to do it, we can just treat A as a constant. All right, find an equation that relates the variables. Well, if you follow uh, example three, you'll follow example four. Um, so we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'll differentiate with respect to t. If a is constant, that just goes to zero. So it's 2b db dt uh, equals 2c dc dt. Uh, the twos cancel in this case. So really, I just have b db dt equals c dc dt, of which I know b, I know c, I know db dt, and I'm just trying to find dc dt. So we're in business. So b, we figured out, was radical 3. Uh, db dt is 500. And C was um, 2, and DC DT is what we're trying to find. So DC DT equals 250 radical 3, and this has got to be miles per hour. Now, it doesn't make sense for this to be positive. Let's look at our picture. The plane is flying further and further away, so the distance from the radar station to the plane should be getting bigger, which means the value of DV, or not DV, DB DT should be positive. So every hour, they're 250 radical 3 miles further away. And in the context of the problem, I probably would put that in a calculator because it would make more sense to say, you know, it's uh, 400 miles per hour or something like that. Okay? All right, those are all your basic examples. Uh, hopefully that'll get you off and running for the uh, practice A. So give that a shot if we're still waiting uh, for people to finish their quiz. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. All right, see you guys later. Bye. Thank you.